this tutorial we're going to start to look at some of the built-in effects which are called fixed effects that actually come with every clip and every item that we create in Premiere Pro. Now I'm going to open up a piece of footage in its own sequence so we can just demonstrate this. So I'm going to control or command double click video to open it up and I'm going to find the kids running. There we go, kids playing in surf. Grab that and drop it into the new sequence icon. Let go and it's got a sequence all on its own. Kids moving backwards and forwards. And now I'm going to go back up using this icon here to go back up to my folders and can control double click on titles where I've got an arrow. I'm going to take that arrow and I'm going to drop it on top of the kids here and I'm going to trim it out to make it a bit longer. So now I've got an arrow in front of the kids. But what if I want that arrow to be pointing at something? What if I want to change its size or its position? Well, if you click on it, you can actually go to a tab up here called Effects Controls and click on Effects Controls and we've actually got effects that are already applied to every single clip and I'm just demonstrating with this arrow. They're found here under the Motion section. And if you untwirl this little twirly here, you'll see that we've got position and scale, rotation and anchor point, and a little effect called anti-flicker. And this is actually an effect that we would use if we've got very thin lines. There are some thin lines on the edge here. And if they start to flicker a bit, you can turn this up to reduce the flicker amount, although it does soften it up slightly. It's basically going to apply a slight blur to anything that's going to flicker. So we're not really going to deal with anti-flicker, but we will look at the others. Now I can, if I like, just click this little icon here and then when I do, I have access to these effects inside my program monitor. So I've clicked the little icon or clicked the word motion and now you'll see that I can see this little circle in the middle which is my anchor point and I've also got the handles at the bottom and at the sides and at the corners to be able to scale the item. But also if I simply click and start to move around, I can physically shift this arrow wherever I want it to be and I can scale it down by using the corner. You'll see that at the moment it's always going to scale proportionally. We can change that, I'll show you how a bit later on. And I can even rotate it and you'll see over here I've got a little rotation control. If I open up this rotation control you'll see I've got a little angle area here and this yellow text is called hot text and if you just click and drag you can just click and enter a particular number so if I did 90 degrees and hit enter you'll see that it goes 90 degrees but while it's yellow if I click and hold my left mouse button I can dynamically move any of these properties and it is actually going to rotate around this anchor point so I can move my anchor point you'll see that we've got anchor point here and I can shift it so if I got my anchor point and I start to pull this across you'll see that my anchor point is now pulled to the end of my arrow and I can even pull it to the bottom of my arrow like this and now when I do rotation look what happens it rotates around the anchor point so the anchor point is important for where you want the effects to take place from because scaling will also take place from the anchor point now I can scale here and that again scales the whole thing in proportion but you'll also see that I've got uniform scale ticked and if I uncheck uniform scale I can either start to scale in a non-uniform way in my program monitor over here so I can make it a lot longer or a lot thinner or I can make it a lot fatter or again thinner the other way or alternatively I can use this hot text to do exactly the same process. Okay so these are your motion controls. We also have one down here for opacity which we'll come to a bit later on. That's just for making the things more or less visible but it has some other options. So position, I could just click and drag around, or if I want to, I can click and drag the hot text over here, X and Y. So if I just want it to go in one direction only, it's safer to just grab the hot text because that will go in just either X across or Y up and down. I can also scale height and width separately, or if I want them both to stay the same, I can click uniform scale, and then we can make the whole thing scale in a uniform way. We can rotate it so it can go into any direction we want. So we can look at different things and point to different things. And of course we can move this anchor point which shows where it's going to take place from. So for instance if I want it to actually rotate around the head of the arrow, I can move the anchor point to the point where it's at the head of the arrow. And then when I rotate it's going to rotate around the head of the arrow as opposed to the tail. And of course I can still take it to wherever I want to make it rotate. 
So those are the motion controls. I will just quickly show you opacity. Opacity just can make it less visible. Zero is going to make it completely transparent and 100% makes it completely opaque, meaning that you cannot see through it. It will cover over whatever is below it. So if I put it over these rocks, you can clearly see you can't see the rocks, but when I start to reduce opacity, you'll start to see the rocks through it until when I get to zero, all you can see is the rocks. So opacity is a way of changing its transparency values. Now, all of these items can be animated. And with animation, we can move this arrow around, but we can also do things called picture in picture, which is where we can have one piece of video playing over another piece of video. And we'll start to look at that in the next tutorial.